Manchester Razor Sharks Weekly. I'm Bill Pucko in for the vacationing John DeTulio, but as always, Lawrence Moulton, the coach of the Razor Sharks, is with us. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. How hey, you it's a pretty, pretty darn eventful week for you guys. You, you, you face the same team, Erie. Yes. You, you blow them out at home. Yeah. You go there and you win by six. Yeah. Uh, an eventful weekend, isn't it? Eventful weekend. You know, first of all, it's good to come off with two wins. Guys are starting to figure it out. They're playing hard together, starting to work well as a team. And, uh, you know, we're just starting to figure it out. And I really appreciate those guys working hard. You know, they're starting to trust each other. And uh, we're on a seven-game winning streak, and we're trying to keep it going. Let's take the home game first. Um, you had them 50 to 11 at the quarter. How do you keep your guys interested in a game like that? Well, you know, you have to stay professional. No matter what, you have to stay professional in this game. Those guys are, are doing that. And, you know, they're, they're, they're really playing well. And you know, in a game like this, you know, you want to have your fans um, appreciate everything you do, and hopefully they appreciated that victory on uh, Saturday. Were you, uh, yeah, I don't imagine that you weren't aware that the, the margin of victory towards the end was approaching a team record, were you? I really wasn't until I saw it in the newspaper yesterday that uh, we broke the franchise record, and that was a beautiful thing. Now, you're always, I know, big into effort. I think what impressed me most about that game on Saturday, having watched it, is at the end, where you guys had the game obviously well in hand, they're still playing defense. In fact, yeah. you, you set a record for keeping the, the Erie team down to the lowest point total Razor Sharks <coughs> have ever held a team in the fourth quarter. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah no well, good. you know, defense creates Rebound your offense, not stress. In order for us to be a good team, we have to play Rogers. well on both ends, and especially good. on defense, and we did that that day. And, so, and it, it really does make a difference, doesn't it? It really Thanks. does. You know, um, you I'm much. a big coach on uh, defense, you know. Uh, you look at the Super Bowl, you know, a lot of people talked about number one offense against number one defense, and I'm a defensive guy, and defense always wins games. All righty. Now you go to the second day, and you knew you were going to have your hands full because you embarrassed them here. You go to Erie. How was it different? Well, it was a little different. First of all, playing on the road is always hard. You know, um, you have to come with a different attitude, and we did that. They had the star player back, and uh, we just had to fight. You know, no team you know, wants to get beat up on, on a regular. And, uh, we just tried to do our best, and uh, we hung in there. We were down like nine points with about six minutes left to go in the game, and uh, our guys came back and fought hard, and uh, we got a good victory. Again, it's all the same question. Is motivation a problem? You beat a team by 89 one night. You figure, geez, if we give back 50, we still beat them by 39. Yeah, motivation is the key. You know, I tell my guys every day is an audition. You never know uh, who's watching, and when you step out on the court, you have to bring your A game. And I really appreciate those guys doing that, and uh, we're trying to keep this streak going and understand that our goal is to win the championship. We're settling for no less than that. How close are you guys to where you want them to be at this point in the season? We're not close. It's going to take time. Still going to have to hit our free throws, hit shots, and, 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 and still work together as a team. But uh, it's a process. Yeah, you've added some players. <clears throat> I mean, uh, even with the record the way it is and stuff, you guys really aren't content to sit with the roster the way it is. Yes. Well, you know, it's a professional league. You know, guys come in. You know, um, guys are going to be evaluated, and you have to bring your A game in order to stay on this team because, as you know, guys want to play on this team. All-time leading scorer at Syracuse University on the Big East Conference. You got a little love on the air last night. Yeah. They, they mentioned you. How was that? Oh, yeah. Well, it's always good to get love, you know, from my Syracuse Nation. Hello, Cuse Nation. <laughs> I love you guys. And uh, being back here in Rochester, you know, trying to instill that same tradition. John always likes to ask about Syracuse University. I mean, you're on top of everything that's going on there. Uh, between now and the time this show airs, they will have played at Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. now, that's a pretty good challenge, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to be hard to win in that zoo. You know, those fans, they are very exciting. But if we do what we have to do, we, if we do what we have to do and just keep playing steady, they'll be fine. Well, you know, every game that we have in this league, I think, is difficult. I don't think there's any difference. Uh, Notre Dame was as hard a game as we've had this year, and Miami was maybe even harder. Uh, we were behind, you know, in the Miami game, both places. Uh, Pitt's a tough team. I mean, they played us tough at home, so, you know, going into their house is going to be a, a, a game similar to, to the one that was here. So we're just going to go in and try to put together a good 40 minutes and uh, hopefully come out with the win. I mean, it, it really is a tough place to play, and they're good at home. Uh, and uh, You just got to be ready to play. And, and we know their environment. We were there last year, so... You just got to put that behind you and, and just just look forward to the game and just come ready to play. Uh, it's definitely going to be a tough game, a physical game. Um, they like to push. Um, we just got to go in there and be ready to play from the beginning. We're, we're fully aware of that. You know, whatever happens, happens. Uh, you know, we just need to keep working, try to get better as we get toward the end of the year. 
and uh, you know, see what see what happens. We are here at Nathaniel's with Lawrence Moten and Rochester Razor Shark Weekly. We'll be back with one of those new additions that we spoke about. Scott Rogers joins us next. Not really, everything is a job, everything is a business. You know, you either practicing or you playing games, practicing or playing games. So you don't really have enough time to really uh, explore the countries or anything like that. Welcome back to Razor Sharks Weekly. I'm Bill Pucko, sitting in for John DeTulio, your regular host of this program. We are at Nathaniel's Pub on Exchange Street, Cornell, one of the fine corporate sponsors of the Rochester Razor Sharks. And I'm pleased to be joined by Scott Rogers, one of the newest members of the Rochester Razor Sharks. Welcome to town, sir. You've got four games in under your belt. How are you finding this league? I find it very interesting. It's very uh, competitive, and you know, I look forward to continuing to keep playing. You know, you, you come into a situation that, that, that's already intact, is that tough to walk into an established team and, and play a, a, an important role? It's always, it's always tough to adjust to the new sentence, but you know, I just come in here and, and do what I'm supposed to do, do my job, and everything else to take care of itself. Is there anything, I know you played a lot of places, a lot of coaches and stuff like this. You, you come into Razor Sharks, the first time you meet Coach Moten. Mm -hmm. uh, what strikes you as being, this is different? Well, you know, I played in um, several different countries, but like I said before, basketball is just basketball. You adjust no matter where you're playing at, whether it's the outside park or the NBA. Basketball is always basketball. All right, well, let's get into that. I said, so we had Aaron Williams in here last week, right. and uh, Aaron, Aaron did the, the tour of South America. You got, a, you got a nice, fresh set of countries you played in. <laughs> Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, Ecuador, and Chile. Got a favorite among those? Uh, to be honest, Ecuador is my favorite. It might sound surprising, but I was able to travel a little bit to Ecuador on my own, so that's why I found it you know, one of my best experiences in yeah. playing overseas basketball. Smaller country, you kind of get a handle on it. Yeah, exactly. Is it, you don't get the chance to be a tourist in a lot of these places when you're playing ball a, a lot, do you? Not really. Everything is a job. Everything is a business. You know, you either practicing or you playing games. Practicing or playing games. So you don't really have enough time to really uh, explore the countries or anything like that. Do you, do you try to prioritize it at all? It says, look, if I'm going to spend the time in Brazil, Argentina, whatever, I want to come away from here having learned something. Uh, well, yeah, that's where my teammates come involved. You know, a lot, when I was in Chile, they actually told me the history about, you know, why, you know, Chile and Argentina were kind of, you know, going at it a little bit. And, uh, you know, you just learn a little bit from, you, you know, from the people. Going at it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, going at like it a little that. bit, you know. Walk me through South America. What's it like playing down there? South America is uh, it's one of the toughest places I've ever played. It definitely made a man out of my basketball game. I, um, in order for me to keep a job, I had to really learn how to play tough basketball because the referees are not going to give you anything down there. Now, what country were you playing in, in South America? I played in, I played in Venezuela, I played in Uruguay, and I played in Argentina. So it's, it's old school basketball down there? Like when you say you had to learn how to play physical basketball, what, is that, what does that mean? I mean, when I say physical, I mean you have to learn how to play without the refs. Aaron Williams was in here last week and he mentioned that the experience of playing in South America was really unique, that he had to get used to getting beat up, getting no calls from the refs. Did you find it the same way? Yeah, that, he didn't tell no lie. Uh, you have to be very, well, one thing about South America is it is a physical league and, and you have to be prepared for that. You know, there's a lot of banging, there's a lot of kicking, a lot of pulling, a lot of grabbing, so you definitely have to be prepared for that. You seem to be better with it than he was, though. It's like, you know, you, you bring it up and said, yeah, it was just part of the game. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, as you can see, I, I have a little bit of weight on me, so I, I was able to take the punishment. Alrighty. Um, did you win anything? Have any real good experiences with any of those teams that you played in there? The farthest I ever went, well, I actually went uh, in Chile. I, I actually reached the finals. I lost in the finals. In Ecuador, where I just returned from, I lost in the semifinals. So, right. you know. Good basketball? Yeah, uh, the best basketball over there to me is probably Argentina. How much better than the rest of these? I mean, because we think Brazil, too, is a large country, that the I mean, basketball ought to be pretty good there. I mean, you tell me, if you look at the Olympics, where is Argentina always ranked? There you go. <laughs> Producing some pros. Hey, come out of Philadelphia. Great place to grow up mm -hmm. playing basketball, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's nothing but competition. You hear a lot about, you know, the uh, playground ball. You run into guys, you know, that have played in the NBA, that you get a chance to measure yourself up to a little bit? Uh, that's all the time. You know, uh, a lot of guys that are NBA come back to summer leagues and we play in a lot of program leagues. And, you know, I match up against uh, guards like Kyle Lowry, Deontay Christmas, John Salmons, Marty Collins. So there are a lot of pros that, you know, I run across in Philadelphia. Now, you play them, and I'm guessing is that you do pretty well. 
it, what's, what's the thought process that says, these guys are in the NBA, I'm playing in Ecuador, but I'm every bit as good as them. How do you, how do you rationalize that? All I can say is to myself is opportunity. You know, they, those guys actually had the opportunity and they came out successful. You know, my opportunity hasn't come yet. All right, back state side, did the Razor Sharks provide some of that opportunity, do you think? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's a couple guys that come and, you know, look at the Razor Sharks, a, a, a lot of pro scouts, and uh, hopefully, you know, my performance allowed me to be scouted. How's, how's this compare to what you saw in South America? I mean, I'm, this American basketball is the same. You know, it's the same. The level? I mean, are you getting, are you getting tested enough? Um, yeah, I mean, you, in some cases, you have to challenge yourself. You know, and uh, some games, you know, teams are not worthy of playing, but you just have to challenge yourself. All right, and you said yeah, there is a goal in mind here. You know, eventually, you know, not necessarily the NBA, but you want to get into Europe, right? Yeah, that's the ultimate goal for me. You know, and I heard the Razor Sharks have a good reputation in getting guys to play in the European basketball. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I mean, we're going to, to talk about, you know, you talk about opportunity, opportunity and reputation. Right. Uh, it's a nice marriage here, isn't it? Yeah, from what I can see, yes. All right. Uh, four games in, uh, averaging 16.7 assists, nice numbers. Welcome to Rochester. Thank you. And thanks for joining us. Scott Rogers on Razor Sharks Weekly. When we return, we have the finals of our Shark Tournament coming up. I'm Bill Pucko. Coming up next on Razor Shark Weekly, our game of Shark has reached the championship round. Welcome back to Racing Shark Weekly. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now for the championship round in our game of Shark. Here are the rules in Shark. This is a one-on-one -on -one competition. You call your shot. The other guy doesn't make the shot that you made. They spell out the word Shark. The first one to spell it out is eliminate. And in this case, the other is the champion. Our finalists are Dwayne Gland against Louis McCroskey. Louis McCroskey, Bronx, New York, going against my man Esteban, a.k.a. Dwayne uh, Glenn. Uh, hi, I'm Dwayne Glenn. Last week I played Mookie. This week I'm going against my boy Louis. Hopefully I can get another win and be the champion of the Shark game. And Louis McCroskey will start us off. Louis has been playing very well, man. Good, solid player, man, playing his role. There we go. You know, one of our veteran leaders, man. And Between the legs, that's He's doing a very good job all, all around. All around solid uh, basketball player. And I might be a little biased because he went to the Q's. And I, because I bleed on. But it is what it is. You gonna go to your spot? <laughs> you gonna go to your, you gonna go to your spot? <laughs> That was a three? Yeah. Three ball by Wayne. There we go. Go ahead, Lou. Anything you can do, go I can do Lou. better. Brooklyn. And Wayne knocks it down straight out of Jersey. I'm not from Brooklyn, no way. This all good, though. Down in T-Nack, Jersey. There we go. Right in. Oh, T Nat. You feel some type of weight. Uh, yeah. And Wayne hits the jump in the corner straight from Newark, New Jersey. And Lou says, I can hit mine from Brooklyn. From the Brooklyn Bridge. Starting to light it up, fellas. Yeah. What's that? I don't know. I didn't. I'm back to back to the step back. The uh, twin left step back three. There we go. Mm. Step back, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh oh. Hey. A end it right. <laughs> end it right. <laughs> you can do it, Lou. Some people born to fly, man. After three hours of practice. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Nah, man, it's all good. He won't do it. He can't do it. You got Much respect. I mean, I came here to win it. I did. I know. I'm happy with that. I'm happy for him. Next competition might be against me. <laughs> so, bring your A game. Always. So, Dwayne Gland is our Shark Champion. His trophy is in the mail. I mean, when you deal with basketball, there are a lot of ignorant people. Um, you know, uh, for example, I was, one day I was in Chile and uh, it, was a, it was a semifinals game. And I was at the free throw line and uh, there were fans throwing coins. Crazy Sharks Weekly. I'm Bill Pucko, sitting in for John DeTulio. Joining me is Scott Rogers, uh, one of the newer players of the Rochester Razor Sharks. We are broadcasting from Nathaniel's Pub here on Exchange Street, Corn Hill, one of the fine sponsors of the Rochester Razor Sharks. I want to remind you that the, the Sharks are playing on the holiday, President's Day afternoon, Monday afternoon, 2 o'clock game against Buffalo, and we expect all you people to be there. This show also uh, airs on Friday on Time Warner Cable Sports at 4 o'clock. Uh, upcoming games, uh, do, do one, does one game blend into the other when you, you start playing a schedule like this? You kind of take what comes or what do teams begin to take on form? Well, you know, we just prepare, you know, the same way for each game. You know, no matter who we're playing for, we just try to stay in rare form, you know, get better as a team and, you know, we just take one game at a time. We don't really look at the schedule to see who we're playing. We just make sure we prepare and we just go in and take a hand at test. Scott Rogers joining us, Scott. Uh, four games in, do you feel fully assimilated? Already? Yeah, I'm, I'm very uh, comfortable with the guys. Um, I kind of know their tendencies a little bit, which makes it, you know, easier for my job. And yeah, I, I acclimated well to the team. Look, we saw Dwayne Bland's tendencies. He just won our, our Shark Tournament yeah. and, and did it in rather impressive style. Uh, these one-on-one -on -one skills, a game like Shark, a game like, you know, uh, you, know you play one-on-ones. Right. The, the skill sets that, that allow you to be good in those things, can you, can you apply them in games? Are those guys necessarily the good players in the games? Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, as you can see on a shark, Glenn can really, really shoot the basketball. And that just comes from practice, hard work, and dedication. You know, um, it's just like Mookie Jones. Mookie Jones is the same way he can, he can flat out just shoot the basketball. Yeah. And in order for you to win one-on-one -on -one competitions, you have to actually practice those type of shots. The, the, the craft that you work on, you have to practice. All right, I think Mookie was a little worn out. He got in the semifinals and <laughs> <laughs> died on his yeah. after, after practice. Look, a couple of issues came up uh, over the past week. Uh, I think they're kind of uni uh, universal sports issues. The first is Marcus Smart, Oklahoma State player, uh, high-profile guy. Uh, he gets heckled by a guy going out of bounds, and, and he gives right. a he gives a, a fan a push. Right. You know that obviously is it, you can't be doing that. Right. But as a player, it doesn't it happen almost daily that you want to just go take somebody on who's just like crossing the line yeah. on you. Yeah. I mean, when you deal with basketball, there are a lot of ignorant people. Um, you know, um, for example, I was, one day I was in Chile, and uh, it was a, it was a semifinals game. And I was at the free throw line, and uh, there were fans throwing coins at me while I was shooting my free throws. And of course, I wanted to go in the stands, but you know, at that time, you have to stay professional and worry about your teammates as well, because you could also get them in, you know, jeopardy. So the referees allow coin throwing in Chile. <laughs> coin throwing, spitting, anything that they can do, that they allow it to happen. Well, at what point in your career do you manage your level of control so that you can turn the other cheek to stuff like this? <sighs> It's so hard. Self-control is one of the hardest things, and you know you just have to be able to do that. You know, in situations like that, you have to be able to control your emotions. You just have to. But when you see when you see the video of Marcus Smart, what do you think when you see it? I said that could be me, depending on you know what words that the guy said. You know, so uh, and, and from the looks of it, they're pretty harsh words. But the other matter that came up is Michael Sam, a potential drafty uh, University of Missouri senior coming out. He's going to play in the NFL next year. He's considered about a second or a third round draft pick. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes out, he goes public with the fact that he is a gay athlete. Right. A professional athlete. Have you played with gay players before? Well, not that I know of. So I, I, no one has ever opened up to me. But I have played against a gay athlete. 
uh, Will Sheridan who played for Villanova. He came out a few years, a few a few years ago, and uh, you know we would pay attention to that. But within within the circle of professional athletes, is this a is this an issue? Is this a concern at all? To me, no. You know, I, I don't think it's an issue. Is a guy going out there giving his blood, sweat, and tears for the team? It shouldn't be an issue. It's can he play or can he play? Right. Right. Get the job done. That's all that matters. All righty. Once again, uh, the Rochester Razor Sharks and Scott Rogers here have a game coming up on Monday, President's Day afternoon at two o'clock against Buffalo. The guys are eight and one, seven straight wins. It's on a roll, isn't it? Right. We yeah, hopefully we can continue. You know, streaks are streaks are nice, aren't they? They're easy to continue, right? No. <laughs> not it's not easy to continue. You know? That's as if you're playing well, you're playing well. You just roll with it, right? Right. Hopefully we can just stay prepared and everything else will take care of itself. All righty. Best of luck to you guys. Uh, we you. look forward to seeing you again Monday afternoon. Uh, Bill Pucko in for John DiTullio. This is Razor Sharks Weekly. Again, you can catch this program always at Friday at 4 o'clock on Time Warner Cable Sports. We thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Well, sometimes they, you, know, you start freewheeling with this kind of score and he just it's a really cool neat way to keep discipline without having this to yell at anything really really smart by calling out that play let's run a play he got their attention guy's incredible stallings on the press rogers back to mookie jones over to Diggs, in for two <laughs> and he chose not to dunk it well, it's 138 to 61, 3, 4, 356 left to go here in this game. We'll be back with more and the rest of this game coming up. Here's my shock face. Oh, look at the alley-oop. Well, bang. Check, please. Rob Diggs has had all of the posterizing shots. Knocked away, stolen, Rodgers. Alley-oop. Oh, no, he did not. Oh!